case study in remote sensing of volcanic eruptions. Volcanic eruptions are a well-known and widespread process that have been occurring on Earth for almost 4 billion years and have played an incredibly important role in shaping both the landscape and sea floor that we know today. As constant and ancient as they are, scientific understanding of volcanic eruptions is still growing due to the hostile, dangerous and sometimes unpredictable nature of these processes. Hazards include lava flows, here in Hawaii, volatiles, as seen in this explosive eruption of the Russian peak Sarachev, captured by NASA, projected volcanic bombs, as seen as large rock fragments erupting from Anak Krakatau in Indonesia, Ash clouds, like the disruptive trail from Iceland's Eyjafjallajökull, again captured by NASA, and lahars, or volcanic mud flows, arguably the most encompassing danger of volcanoes, seen here on Mount St. Helens. These have all prevented ground-based measurements from being taken with low cost, effort, or risk. In terms of the global effects of volcanic activity, they are not only a widespread hazard on the ground and in the immediate surrounding air. Volcanic aerosol also poses a threat to the global heat energy balance. The main constituents in volcanic aerosol are carbon dioxide, water vapour, sulphur dioxide and nitrogen gas, as well as ash particles ejected lower into the atmosphere. These constituents experience chemical reactions and travel on the air currents as droplets across the expanse of the earth for up to three years. These resulting products of eruption reflect incoming solar radiation, ultimately decreasing the global average surface temperature slightly over this period. It also historically causes large changes in sun scattering, as clouds experience net heating, producing strong weather events and potentially harming agriculture. The greatest decrease in risk by switching to remote sensing techniques possibly comes from mapping lava flows. By Using hyperspectral imaging of wavelengths at around 4 micrometers and 11 micrometers, the difference between ambient surface temperature and high temperature volcanic heat can be observed and mapped using infrared radiance. This helps to identify locations of subsurface magma chambers, extent of existing lava flows, and predicted mag magma outburst locations to a spatial resolution of 250 meters from MODIS data and 30 meters for older thematic mapping data. By using wavelength bands corresponding to different thermal anomalies, Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer, or MODIS, has used its multispectral properties to create maps of surface heat energy surrounding volcanic eruptions, as seen in this lava flow map. This instrument travels on a sun-synchronous near-polar orbit that gives several measurements per day and whole Earth coverage in one to two days. The ability to map infrared anomalies and heat energy of volcanic activity can be paired with digital elevation models to map potential routes of lava flows, lahars, and debris flows using the lowest nearest neighbor technique in geographical information systems. These hazards follow the natural topography, so using precise measurements of slope, drainage, and potential flow and discharge of material, it is possible to create hazard maps like this one of Mount Rainier, by the US Geological Survey. Another menace of volcanic activity that can now be monitored quickly and frequently with remote sensing is ash. Ash clouds can now be monitored in near real time using equipment such as Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite, the MODIS instrument, and meteorological satellites, as well as others. By using particular infrared wavelength bands for meteorological satellites, Brightness temperature differences can be identified to highlight the reflective property of volcanic ash clouds and produce images of their trails. This allows information on the trail paths to be relayed to governments, affected settlements, aviation companies and national health officials so they can better, better prepare their citizens and infrastructure for the effects of this hazard. While it is often difficult to distinguish carbon dioxide and H2O volcanic emissions from background values, sulfur dioxide can still be monitored for its effects on the environment, climate, and public health. As well as this, it has been monitored that SO2 emissions increase rapidly before a volcanic eruption, assisting in prediction techniques. By using equipment like the ozone monitoring instrument, 
in ultraviolet and visible wavelength bands, sulfates and dust in the atmosphere can be identified at a spatial resolution of 13 kilometers with global coverage every day. As with most applications of remote sensing, an ongoing discussion exists over the benefits and drawbacks of using satellite and ground-based remotely acquired data to monitor volcanic hazards. For monitoring volcanic emissions, while SO2 can be monitored easily, the difficulty still exists in separating water vapour and carbon dioxide emissions from background atmospheric values. In addition, while some instruments can identify ash clouds, gas emissions and lava flows through cloud cover and at night, highly detailed and near visible images of volcanoes from space are hindered by a lack of solar reflection at the surface. Another discussion is the spatial versus temporal resolution trade-off. Satellites that capture data on volcanics frequently have a lower spatial resolution, only down to kilometers, in comparison to less frequent flyovers, which can get down to tens of meters. As well as this is the cost of trying to stay tracked on individual volcanoes to capture the highest detail of data at eruption versus saving money and hoping by chance the right satellite is traveling over at the right time. Even though there are issues surrounding remote volcano monitoring still to be addressed in the future, including the ever important question, can we predict them? The answer to whether remote sensing of volcanic activity has furthered scientific studies and hazard assessment is yes. New valuable data that could potentially save lives and the costs of repairing infrastructure and machinery is now readily available almost every day and offers almost whole earth coverage. Compl complex measurements that were difficult to obtain from the ground, such as seismicity, gas emissions, changes in morphology, lava flow extent, lahar speed and discharge, ash cloud movement and altitude, are now all being monitored constantly as the new eruptions occur. The data processed from past eruptions might now allow us to be better prepared in the future.